Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students so in the previous class we started with a second order uh, partial differential equation with uh, constant coefficients and i introduced some terminologies related to that and i also gave you a slight theory behind it that uh, how to find out the complementary function and uh, what can we do about the particular integral and as i told you in the previous class that uh, in today's class uh, we will solve some examples motivated from um, uh, finding out uh, the complementary function and the particular integral of a second order partial differential equations so as i told you in the previous class that uh, basically we are interested in pde of this type f dd dash times z equals to some f of xy as you can see <clears throat> here um, we could have uh, uh, basically a partial differential operator so this might look like uh, some somewhat this so a0 d square plus a1 d d dash plus a2 d dash square times z equals to f of x y all right let's call it equation number one and as i told you the first starting point in order to find out um, a, a general solution in order to find out the solution of this PDE is to first calculate the complementary function and then calculate the particular integral. So we will solve some examples where we will uh, see how to do them, uh, how to do um, that uh, calculation uh, for complementary function and particular integral. Um, as I told you in the previous class, you can either substitute d equals to m and d dash equals to one to find out the auxiliary equation for the PD f dd dash z equals to zero. So when we are when we are trying to find out the complementary function, we will simply consider the PDE f dd dash times z equals to zero. And from here, we will try to find out the complementary function. And uh, the method to calculate the complementary function is very straightforward you just have to substitute d equals to m, d dash equals to one, solve the auxiliary equation, and then write down the complementary function. Or we can write d equals to one and d dash equals to m. We will solve the same, uh, we will solve uh, an auxiliary equation of the similar type, and then we will write down the complementary function. We will see examples uh, for both the kinds. So let's start with our first problem and see whether we can uh, be able to obtain the complementary function or not. So I'm just going to consider um, one example. So let us consider <coughs> um, d, uh, d square, so solve um, d square minus um, d dash square times z equals to zero. So the solution if you look at carefully this, to this equation, it's nothing but your del square z by del x square minus del square z by del y square. As I told you in the previous class, now we write d as del del x and d dash as del del y. All right. So this is nothing but your uh, second order partial differential equation, of course, homogeneous type because both of your derivatives are of second order. So these are the few observations that you should be accustomed to withdraw to draw from the from the given equation at, at the very beginning before you can actually try to solve it okay some of the things that you must know that you must um, uh, how to say it um, identify just looking at the equation now since uh, we already have uh, right hand side as zero so there is no question of finding out the particular integral so now we are just going to find out the uh, solution of this uh, of this pd or you might say complementary function so first of all uh, we put d equals to m and uh, d dash equals to one. Let's call it as equation number one. In equation one, uh, then uh, the auxiliary equation, then the auxiliary um, equation, auxiliary equation is uh, m square minus one equals to zero. So from here, if you solve, you will get m equals to plus minus one. 
And uh, in the previous class, I also gave you a, a, a slight theory behind it that uh, if you get the distinct roots, then how to write down the uh, complementary function. So here, what we can say, since we don't have a particular integral, we can simply say the required general solution, uh, the required general solution from next example and, on, uh, example and onwards, I will just write GS, okay? The required general solution is um, z equals to phi1 of y plus m1x. So m1 is, if you take one, then m1x, that is one, and a phi2 of y plus m2x, which is minus one, so y minus x, where phi1 and phi2 are arbitrary functions. Okay, so this is the required general solution. You might as well verify um, whether you can get the same equation back or not. So let's do the um, uh, second or uh, first, uh, first order partial derivative with respect to x. So this is the required answer. This is the required answer. You can do the verification. The verification, this is not needed. I'm just showing it to you. Huh? This is not part of the solution anyways. So if I do, if I take this as a solution, and if I do the partial derivative with respect to x, so this will become del z, um, let's do the first, uh, first order derivative. So del z del x equals to phi 1 dash y plus x minus phi 2 dash y minus x. And then I will do the partial derivative with respect to x twice. So this one will become phi 1 double dash y plus x minus minus plus phi two double dash y minus x. Similarly, if you calculate the partial derivative with respect to y from this relation, um, then in that case, uh, it will become uh, del z del y equals to phi one dash of y plus x plus phi two dash of y plus x del square z by del y square, then this one will become uh, sorry, this one is minus and this one will become phi one double dash of y plus x plus phi two double dash of y minus x. Now you can see del square z by del x square equals to phi one double dash plus phi two double dash and del square z by del y square equals to uh, phi one double dash plus phi two double dash. That means they are same. So from this relation, you, you might as well put some equation number as well. Um, it doesn't matter. And here also you can put an equation number and then you just simply compare. This is up to you. So if we compare, then basically by comparing, we will obtain, by comparing, we obtain uh, del square z by del x square equals to del square z by del y square. You might as well write it as d square minus d dash square times z equals to zero. And this is the required equation which you started with initially, right? So this is the required equation which we started with initially. So we can say that the solution which we obtain z equals to phi one of y plus x plus phi two of y minus x um, is basically a general solution of this PD. And we can also verify it that if you take this as a general solution, you get the same PD back. All right, so this is one such example. Let us let me take one more example so that it will clear out your doubt. Um, so our another example is, uh, I don't know which example number is that? Uh, example two, I think it is example two. Yes, I just did one example. So d square minus 3add dash plus 2a square d dash square times z equals to zero. Again, same problem. We have to solve for this. We have to solve this, okay? Um, sometimes uh, my camera uh, creates some issues. So it, um, it, it does some auto-focusing. So um, it might become hazy for, uh, for a second or two. Um, let's call it as equation number one. We have to solve this problem. I'm calling it as equation number one. As usual, 
this is nothing but a second order pd first observation second observation it is it is of homogeneous type because all the derivatives are of same order two observations we can immediately uh, draw uh, third one is um, um, it is of constant coefficients yeah if i take a as a constant so it is of constant coefficient so now um, to solve this we again put so we put uh, d equals to m and uh, d dash equals to 1 uh, in the equation 1 in the equation 1 uh, then the require then the auxiliary equation it's better not to use the required word again and again so then the auxiliary equation is um, it's very straightforward m square minus 3 a m plus 2 a square equals to 0 and uh, if I'm not wrong, then this can be factorized and uh, we can be able to write it as, um, so this can be written as uh, M minus A and M minus 2A. Let me just quickly verify whether I did it correctly or not. So M square minus 2AM minus AM plus 2A square, yes. So I did it correctly and uh, we can write M equals to A and two way. So we found two distinct rules. You immediately have to notice whether you are getting the two distinct rules, whether you are getting, uh, whether, you, whether you are getting uh, repeated rules, uh, um, depending on the situation, it should be um, um, clear to you what kind of rules you are getting. So now that we have uh, distinct rules, we can simply write the required general solution. General solution is z equals to again pi 1 of y plus m1x i'm taking m1 as uh, a so y plus ax then phi 2 of y plus 2ax where phi 1 and phi 2 you can write where phi 1 and phi 2 are arbitrary functions all right um this is that. Let me take one example where we have the repeated rules. Uh, I have to look into my uh, lecture note where I have the repeated root example. So I have a couple of examples here. Um, yes. So I have one example. So solve. solve uh, 25R minus 40S plus 16T equals to zero solution. So 25R minus 40S plus 16T uh, equals to zero. As I told you in the previous class that here, R is nothing but your second order partial derivative with respect to X. S is your mixed derivative with respect to X and Y, of course, second order. And T is your second order derivative partially um, with respect to Y. So this is nothing but your 25 D square minus 40 D D dash plus 16 D dash square times Z equals to zero. Let's call it as equation number one. Now I will substitute d equals to m and d dash equals to 1. Same language has to be followed, okay? So same language has to be followed. I'm just going to write down the auxiliary equation. The auxiliary equation is 25m square minus 40m plus 16 uh, equals to 0. So this will become 5m minus 4 whole square equals to 0. That means m is equals to 4 by 5, 4 by 5, right? So here we have the repeated rules. This is an example where you have repeated roots of the auxiliary equation. And this needs our special attention because you've got a repeated root. So therefore the required solution the required general solution, the required general solution is z equals to phi one of 
y plus m one x four by five times x plus. If you get a repeated roots, then you put an x here, as I, as I told you in the previous class, and then you write phi two of y plus four by five x, where phi one and phi two are arbitrary functions. Now you might argue why to put x here. So this is the this is the way you find out the uh, complementary function or the general solution. Um, another thing which you can do, you can just verify. You just do the partial derivative with respect to x twice, mixed derivative with respect to x and y, and then partial derivative with respect to y twice. Put everything back in here, or just combine them, and you'll obtain the exact same equation. Uh, the verification will be done in the similar way. I just showed you uh, one example before, one or two examples before. So this will be your general solution, and this is the case where you get a repeated root. This is um, a problem where we only have uh, a second order partial derivative, partial differential equation, and if you get a repeated root, it will be repeated twice. But it may happen that you have an nth order partial differential, nth order partial differential equation, homogeneous type and constant coefficient. And you might end up having n repeated roots. Then, in that case, it will become phi one of y plus m one x plus x times phi two of y plus m two x plus x squared times phi three of y plus uh, m three x plus dot dot and so on. It will be up to um, x to the power n or x to the power n minus one. I have to write it down. But every time, a power of x will increase. All right, and that's how you will get the general solution for an nth order partial differential equation. Whose auxiliary equation has n repeated roots, all right? But we are in the much simpler case. We just have a second order PD. I'm going to show uh, one more example where we can substitute for uh, d dash instead of uh, d. Uh, let me see where have I done that? So I have it in my notes somewhere. Um, I think I don't have it here uh, handy, but uh, I can. Uh, we can still write the example. So the problem which I'm talking about is. Um, So let us consider one more example. Another example. This goes like this. Uh, find a uh, solve. So solve example four. Yeah. So solve uh, d square minus two d d dash plus uh, d dash square. Z equals to zero. In this example, where I'm going to show you what will happen if you substitute d dash equals to m and b equals to one. That's the only difference. Ah. So the solution is, of course, it's a second-order partial differential equation because everywhere you have power two, and it is of homogeneous type because of the second-order derivative. So these are the two conclusions that we can immediately draw. Let me call it as equation number one. Now we will go just other way around. So put d equals to one and d dash equals to m. Then the auxiliary equation. Then the auxiliary equation is how does that look like? M square. I uh, know. Uh, yes. So here it is one. Here it is minus of two m plus m square. So m square minus two m plus one. 
equals to zero. So from here, I will get m minus one whole square equals to zero. So that means m equals to one and one. So here I got a repeated root situation. See, here I got a repeated root situation. So therefore, the general solution, the required general solution is here we write z equals to phi one of not y plus mx. Here we will write x plus m one y. And similarly, phi two of x plus m two y. So x plus m one y, which is one, so y. Because of the repeated root, I will get one y here, and then I will have phi one of, uh, sorry, phi one of x plus y, where uh -huh, this is phi two, phi one of x plus y plus y times phi two of x plus y, where phi one and phi two are arbitrary functions. Are arbitrary functions. All right. So this is how we will solve the examples. All right. Um, let me. Uh, I'm just going to verify this theory whether uh, whether we will get the same solution or not. Um, okay. So we substitute d equals to m. Okay, yes. So that's that. Now, uh, we are going to see problems where we will have a particular integral to and then what we can do about them. All right. So let me start with a very simple example. Um, Yes. So there are two rules, uh, two or three rules, basically, uh, which I'm going to teach you, probably two rules about how to find out the uh, particular integral. So the first rule is I'm going to put it in terms of uh, in terms of a theorem, like a theorem. So theorem one uh, for the proof, we can look into the textbook. But uh, here we are just looking interested in the statement. So if f d d dash be a homogeneous homogeneous function of d and d dash of degree let's say 2 then 1 by f d d dash phi Two, this two is of derivative uh, ax plus by uh, equals to one by f of ab times phi of ax plus by, where phi f of ab is not equals to zero, and this phi two is the second order derivative, second order derivative, not the partial, but the total derivative, second order derivative with respect to ax plus by as a whole. That means total derivative. We'll see what does this statement mean. Okay. So what this statement basically says that if you have, let's say, second order derivative uh, of this function phi and then you are charging the uh, charging this uh, one by f d d dash then that will be equals to the value of this expression will be equals to one by f of a b phi of ax plus b y um we'll see what does this statement mean so let us take one example so what does this what does this statement mean is that uh, if so, uh, let's say a deduction, a deduction, a deduction. So let us substitute. Let ax plus by 
equal to some variable v. So then the same theorem, the same theorem will imply one by f of d d dash phi of uh, two of the variable v equals to f of a b phi of v. Right. So this is what we will get. Now since here um, we have one by f d d dash, there is some side note. Uh, first of all, let me put, let me align this page so that all of you can be able to see it. So first of all, we keep in mind that when we are finding the particular integral, d means derivative, partial derivative with respect to x. That is fine. The minute you take one by d, it means integral with respect to x. Whatever you have here, let's say some f, f dx. If you have one by d, d one by d dash of some f, that means it's the integral of f with respect to y. And if you have uh, one by d d dash, that means you have double integral, uh, one with respect to x, another with respect to y. So f of dx dy. So d means partial derivative. D is the differential operator, but one by d is the integral operator. Okay. So d means del del x, but one by d means integral with respect to x. D dash means del del y, but one by d dash means integral with respect to y. All right. So here, when we have one by f d d dash, this basically means that now it's an integral operator. When we are finding the particular integral uh, of this p d, when we are finding the particular integral of this p d equals to f, what we are doing is we are doing z equals to one by f of d d dash of f. This is what we are doing when we are finding the particular integral. So that means here, now what I'm doing, I'm taking the integral of this f because the minute one by f d d dash comes into the picture, we are no longer talking about the derivative. We are not talking about the integral, integral, right? So here, what will happen is um, I can, you have second order derivative. So I can integrate both sides with respect to V twice. So if I integrate both sides with respect to V twice, what will happen? It will give us one by F D D dash of phi of V is equals to one by F of A V integral, integral phi of V twice integral, right? repeated integral or double integral, whatever you prefer. That means if I replace this f, this phi by this f, then one by f d d dash is equals to one by f of a b integral over uh, double integral of same f repeated integral because you have a second order derivative of the same function f. We'll see by an example, okay? So let's consider one example that will clarify uh, a lot of our doubts. So I'm just going to put this in the in the box and uh, let's take one example. So suppose we have solve. So we have an example of this type. Uh, del square z by del x square plus del square z by del y square equals to 12 x plus y. As you can see, this right hand side here, v is nothing but ax plus by. Oh. So as you can see, this right hand side falls exactly under this category. How? Uh, because uh, this uh, um, right hand side is nothing but our ax plus by, where a is 1 and b is 1 right where a is one and b is one see it looks exactly like this one when you cal once you calculate the particular integral it will become one by f d d dash uh, phi of v where v is 12 uh, where v is um, a x uh, this um, a x plus b y where a is one and b is one we'll see so solution uh, the given p d e the given p d e is you can write it in terms of this t square plus d dash square times z equals to 12 x plus y. 
Now, as usual, since uh, uh, here we have a right hand side, so we have to find out the complementary function by considering this as zero, and then we will find out the particular integral. So to calculate the complementary function, to calculate in it, since it is a first example of this type, I'm writing all the wordings. From next example and onwards, I expect you to fill in these wordings. I will directly do the calculation. All right. So to calculate the particular uh, complementary function, complementary function, complementary function. What we can do, we can consider this equation equals to zero. Let's call this one as one, this one as two. Then the auxiliary equation, the auxiliary equation is obtained from two, from two by taking what do we have to take d equals to m and d dash equals to one so if i substitute this here uh, by taking this so what we will have is m square plus one equals to zero so we will get m equals to minus one minus one uh, is it minus one no this will be plus minus i sorry this will be plus minus i okay so now that we have gotten plus minus i, we can write our complementary function, the required complementary function, CF is z equals to phi one of y plus m one x. This expression is no longer uh, dependent on um, real uh, roots or, compl or complex root. It is valid for any uh, root. So phi one of y plus m one x, that means, uh, plus ix and then phi two of y minus uh, ix because here it will be m1x and here it will be m2x so and you can write phi one and phi two are arbitrary functions that's one part so let's write it as equation number three now we have to find out the particular integral all right so now we have to find out the particular integral so to find out the particular integral, the particular integral pi is given by is given by um, just write pi one by f d d dash uh, f of v or phi of v. Uh, so here, what is our f of d d dash? I have to go to the next page because I don't have any more uh, space left. 12 x plus one. This is our given f d d dash uh, f of v. So here v is x plus y, or you can say a x plus b y, where our a is one and b is one. Now check. When you substitute a equals to one and b equals to one, whether f of a v is becoming zero or not. Is it becoming zero? One plus one, that is two. So it's not becoming zero, okay? So what we can do, we can just substitute and we use that formula to calculate the particular integral. The formula says it will be one by uh, f of a v. That means one square plus one square, double integral uh, f of v. So that means 12, v dv dv so this reduces to 12 by 2 if i integrate once then this will become v square by 2 dv and if i integrate twice then it will become 12 by 2 then 1 by 2 then 1 by 3 uh, this becomes uh, sorry this becomes v cube that means uh, everything cancels out v is our x plus y whole cube so therefore the required particular integral is x plus y whole cube. Therefore the required general solution, the required general solution is z equals to complementary function plus particular integral. That means what is the complementary function? Phi one of y plus ix plus phi two of y minus ix 
plus particular integral, which is x plus y whole cube. And this is the required solution that we were looking for. Yes. All right. So I'm sure you're getting the idea that how to calculate the particular integral. If it falls under this category where you have, I don't know, sine of x plus y or e to the power 5x plus 6y, anything that doesn't make your f of a be non-zero, just use this formula. And it's pretty straightforward. You can find uh, tons of other examples in, uh, in the textbooks. Um, uh, but if your f of a b is becoming zero, then the formula changes a little bit. Okay, so I will now introduce sub case one, where our f of a b is getting zero. All right, so what does the rule say? I'm just going to write down the rule first that if it is becoming zero, then what do we have to do? So if it is becoming zero, um, you can write sub case one. Sub case one. The so sub case one is when f of a b is zero, then then it will imply that bd minus ad dash is a factor of fd d dash. This can be verified very easily. If you have f of ab is equals to zero, then bd minus ad dash will be a factor of fd d dash. And then we have a small result. Then we have a small result. You can call it as theorem two. Of course, the proof is not given here. So theorem two, uh, one by uh, whatever factor that is making, uh, that is becoming zero. It, it will happen that not uh, um, the entire FD dash is becoming zero. Um, one of the factor is becoming zero that is making the entire FD dash as zero. So for example, you may have D plus D dash and D minus D dash whereas only d minus d dash is becoming zero. So you treat d plus d dash the same way, where for d plus d dash, now the integral will reduce to a single integral because you have a first order derivative, not the second order derivative. The double integral comes for the double order, for the second order partial differential operator, okay? So it depends on what order of partial differential operator you are considering, that f d d dash. And the second one, the, the one which is actually becoming zero, for which f of a, a b is actually becoming zero, there is a separate way to treat that. What is that way? So first of all, you identify that factor, which could be b d dash minus a d dash. And suppose it occurs n times. It could be set first time. It could be only once, twice, or third time, three times, depending on the order of the PD. If it is occurring that many times, then b d minus a d dash hold to the power n phi of a x plus b y equals to x to the power n divided by b to the power n by factorial n phi of ax plus by. This we can write down directly. That means if I can be able to identify the factor for which the entire fd dash is becoming zero, then I will take that factor times this uh, uh, the, the, the function on the right hand side and I can directly use this formula. And now on this function, I can charge the factors which are not becoming zero. All right, let's see one example. So this is a theorem uh, for the proof in, um, uh, interested uh, students can look into some textbooks uh, on uh, second order partial differential equations. Um, I'm just going to give one example to explain this terminology and explain this method. So let me quickly find out uh, one example motivated from this. All right, so Let's see this example. Uh, solve solve d square minus two d d dash plus d dash square times z equals to tan of y plus x or x plus y. So obviously this is uh, one of the situations where we have to find out complementary function. We have to find out particular integral because the right hand side is non-zero. And obviously it's a second order homogeneous partial differential equation. So the solution, uh, uh, you have to write all those sentences. Uh, I'm just uh, going to write down the 
um, auxiliary equation for the complementary function. So the auxiliary equation, the auxiliary equation, auxiliary equation, equations for the equation for the complementary function, for the complementary function is uh, m square minus 2m plus 1 equals to 0. So from here, our roots will become m equals to 1 and m equals to 1. We have a repeated root. Therefore, the required complementary function, complementary function, you may all as well write uh, CF, okay, is uh, z equals to uh, phi 1 of y plus m1x plus x times phi 2 of y plus m2x, which is x, where phi 1 and phi 2 are arbitrary functions. So this is that. Now we have to find out the particular integral. Keep in mind, this falls under the category of that uh, uh, f of ax plus by. So the formula to calculate the particular integral will either fall into this category or the one which I showed you earlier, where f of ab is not zero. So let's see the particular integral, which is one by f d d dash. That means d square minus two d d dash plus d dash square. Uh, let's write one here. Uh, tan of y plus x. Now let's see, if I substitute d equals to a and d dash equals to b, where our a is one and b is also one, this will become zero. So that means this is the case where your f of a b is becoming zero. So that means the rule which we learned earlier is no longer applicable directly. So first of all, we will see what this is turning out to be. So this is turning out to be one by d minus d dash whole square tan of y plus x. So here we don't have a separate factor that is d plus d dash uh, then d minus d dash type situation. Here what we have is d minus d dash square whole to the power two tan of y plus x. That, that the entire factor is becoming uh, zero. Now, if the entire factor is becoming zero, we will go back to this rule. This rule says that one by bd minus ad dash whole to the power n b is 1 and uh, a is 1 see uh, phi of ax plus by that means phi of uh, phi is basically tan of x plus y a is 1 b is 1 so if it happens in this fashion then we can write the particular integral by using this formula the formula says it should be x to the power n that means n is 2 then b to the power n b is 1 um, to the power n that means 2 then we have n factorial that means 2 factorial and then phi of ax plus by that means tan of ax plus by so a is 1 b is 1 that's just, just this thing so this is x square by 2 tan of x plus y see the rule is so simple that it is giving you directly the answer you don't have to do anything basically all right so the required general solution the required general solution you might call gs um, is uh, z equals to phi 1 write these two so phi 1 uh, of x plus y plus x times phi 2 of x plus y if it is not confusing you you can write y plus x by the way uh, plus particular integral which is x square by 2 tan of x plus y so this is the required working rule this is this is the way we calculate the general solution by calculating the complementary function and particular integral depending upon the fact that when you are calculating the particular integral under what category you are falling into whether your f of ab is becoming non-zero then you use the previous rule if f of ab is becoming zero then you use then you identify which factor is creating the problem if uh, only one of the factors is creating a problem then you treat the first factor according to the first rule and the second factor based on this rule but if your entire FDD dash is creating a problem, then you use directly this rule, all right? And that's how we calculate the uh, particular integral. Then the general solution is complementary function plus particular integral, which is basically this, all right? The last method, which I'm thinking to, or which I'm willing to teach you is uh, something which you already know. 
and it's a lot more easier and you can treat any problem. So the rule which I just taught you, um, it will be valid in that one, in, in that case too. So let me just uh, uh, consider one example that will be much uh, interesting uh, to, to solve. Example, uh, I don't remember, so I'm writing example three. So solve d square plus three d d dash plus two d dash square times z equals to x plus y. See, it's falling exactly into the same category of the previous example, but we will learn a new method and a much more interesting one uh, from my point of view, uh, because this is, this is something you already know. So I'm calling it as equation number one, and uh, I'm just going to write down the auxiliary equation. So the auxiliary equation, auxiliary equation for the complementary function CF um, for the equation one, for equation one is uh, substitute D equals to M. So M square, then D dash equals to one. So three M plus two equals to zero. So I believe the solutions will be M plus one times M plus two equals to zero. So from here you will obtain M equals to minus one and minus two. So the complementary function is phi one of y plus m one x that is minus x plus phi two of y plus m two x that is minus of two x where phi one and phi two are arbitrary. Uh, sometimes uh, number of times blocks it arbitrary function functions. That's that. Now we need to find out the particular integral. All right. So to calculate the particular integral, to calculate particular integral, particular integral, we just write ti equals to one by f d d dash uh, f of x plus uh, f of uh, x y, which is basically x plus y. Now, what is our d? f of d d dash it's d square plus 3 d d dash plus 2 d dash square x plus y all right now here it will become interesting um, what i'm going to do i'm going to take 2 d dash square out so let's take 2 d dash square out by the way you can take d square out as well there is no restriction. So then it will become um, one plus d square by two d dash square plus three by two d d dash. Uh, let's keep this as a big bracket. This one is the small bracket, then again the big one, and then x plus y. I hope I did this calculation correctly. Now, I'm sure some of you are getting the idea what I'm trying to do. What I will do, I will write this equal to the power minus one x plus one. And now some of you know this negative, I'm pretty sure all of you know this negative binomial expansion. This is one minus x plus x square minus x cube and dot dot and so on. And uh, another one is one minus x whole to the power minus one, then one plus x plus x square dot dot and so on. Similarly, you can have whole to the power minus two and then this form will change or whole to the power minus three and then this form will change. Okay, so that's how we know the binomial, uh, negative binomial expansion. So if I use the same binomial expansion here, it will become one by two d dash square and then one minus d dash square by two d dash square plus three by two d d dash. Um, of course, there will be a negative sign. And uh, then here uh, plus uh, d square two d dash square plus three by two uh, d d dash whole square minus and so on x plus y. All right, that's what we are going to get. 
Now, here we can notice, as I told you in the beginning, that one by d is the integral with respect to x, one by d dash is the integral with respect to y, whereas d and d dash are the differential operators. So here I have d squared. That means this is a second order uh, derivative with respect to x. So when this function comes here, forget about the integral. First, we will do the differentiation. Basically, when you have d by d dash, either you can do d by 1 by d dash or you can do 1 by d dash d. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter whether you are doing the integral first and then differentiation or differentiation first and then integral. It's pretty much the same. So I take 1 by 2 d dash square out and I will do the derivative with respect to x first. So derivative of x with respect to x is 1, but the second order derivative will make it 0. Similarly, derivative of y with respect to x will always be zero. So forget about the second order derivative. So this term is taken care of. It will become zero. Now let's come to this one. So first order derivative with respect to x will be um, pop, 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 will be one, and then we will do the integral. But when y goes to here, first order derivative of uh, basically, um, um, with respect to x, uh, if I do the integral first, let's say, then it will become y square by 2, but then I will do the differentiation and then it will become 0. So that means 3 by 2 dd dash of y will become 0 and the higher order terms will anyways make it 0. So it doesn't matter whether we will calculate the higher order terms or not, they are always coming out to be 0. So we are not interested in any higher order terms. So what we are basically interested in is 1 by 2 d dash square x plus y and then um, minus three by two uh, d d dash of x because the rest of the terms are getting zero. No need to write them. Now here I will do the um, I will do the derivative first, so it will become uh, one, and then I'm doing the integral, so it will become y, right? So d of x is one, but one by d dash of one is y, so this will become one by two d dash. I hope it is visible. D dash is square of x plus y minus 3 by 2 y. So this will give you 1 by 2 d dash square x minus y by 2. Isn't it? x minus y by 2. Now I will do the integral with respect to, uh, this is 1 by d dash square. No? I will do integral twice with respect to y because you have d dash square as, I mean, 1 by d dash square. So I will do integral twice with respect to y and this will give you uh, 1 by, uh, so first y and then y square by 2 and then I'm multiplying by half. So this will become x square, x y square, sorry, not x square, x y square by 4 minus uh, y cube by 24. Therefore, the required general solution, uh, the required general solution is complementary function, which is a CF plus PI. So the complementary function is um, phi one of, what was it? Um, y minus X, then phi two of Y minus two X, then complete particular integral, which we just calculated as X Y square by four minus Y cube by 24. This is the required answer. And this is an, another method that we just learned that if you don't remember the previous methods, that is f of a b is becoming zero or non-zero, you can remember this one. This is this is very straightforward. You don't have to remember anything. You just do the negative binomial expansion, and from there calculate the um, the derivative or calculate the integral depending upon up to which order you have to consider the differential operator in that uh, negative binomial expansion. You may ask as stop uh, after writing the first term, which we did. We didn't need to calculate the higher order uh, derivatives uh, in that binomial expansion because the function itself is getting zero after first order, after the first term of the binomial expansion. So we just stop there. And uh, this is another method uh, that is uh, quite, uh, quite useful in this case. And uh, let me, um, let me give you one more example since I have uh, two or three minutes left. So one more example could be um, just to give you an essence. Huh? So solve. What is the problem? Del square z by del x square 
minus del square z by del y square equals to x minus y. See again, this is falling under the previous category. So you can always use that f of a b method, but we will use that uh, binomial expansion. Okay. So here, uh, the auxiliary equation. First of all, always write the auxiliary equation for the complementary of the complementary function for equation one of the complementary function for equation one. So it will become m square minus one equals to zero. So your m will be plus minus one, and therefore the complementary function is um, phi one of y plus x plus phi two of y minus x, where phi one and phi two are arbitrary, where phi one and phi two are arbitrary. Now we will find out the particular integral. That means particular integral is one by f d d dash. That means d square minus d dash square of f, which is x minus y. We can always do that uh, a minus uh, that f of a b thing, but uh, here we will use that again binomial expansion. So I will take one by d square out, and this will become uh, one by one minus. d dash square by d square x minus y and this is nothing but one by d square uh, one minus d dash square by d square whole to the power minus one of x minus y. Now I can do the binomial expansion. So this is one by d square and uh, one plus d dash square by d square um, plus d dash to the power four by d to the power four. Plus dot dot and so on. I am guessing all of them must be plus because here we have minus one, here we have minus one. Um, if I'm wrong, then you can always correct this binomial expansion. But I think the, here everywhere you have plus. Uh, if I'm not uh, wrong, so here what will happen? One by d square. Now again, when x minus y is coming here, um, we are doing the partial derivative with respect to uh, with respect to x. Uh, no, we are doing partial derivative with respect to y. So this one will become zero. This one, will, so all basically higher order terms are becoming zero. So x minus y plus zero plus zero dot dot and so on. So what we are left with is only one by d square um, x minus y. So when I do the integral uh, with respect to x, it will become x square by two, then x cube by six minus. uh then this will be x square y by 2 and therefore the required the required general solution is you can write z equals to phi 1 of y plus x plus phi 2 of y minus x plus particular integral which is x cube by 6 minus 1 by 2 x square y And this is the require where phi one and phi two are arbitrary. Don't forget to write this. Phi one and phi two are arbitrary, and therefore this is the required general solution of this PDE one. And as we can see that by this method, you don't have to remember one of those formulas. All you have to remember is uh, this binomial expansion, and everything becomes pretty much straightforward. But the methods which we learnt just now, they are also very important because they. Um, sort of helps you uh, when you have a function of type uh, f of a x plus b y, type right hand side. So either you can use that one or this one. It is up to you. But uh, the method to find out the complementary function that does not change at all. So I hope I was able to uh, give you some essence uh, behind uh, this uh, second order partial differential equation with constant coefficients. So I will stop this lecture now, and in the next class we will start with something called canonical form. where we will learn about hyperbolic parabolic and elliptic equations and how to identify them so thank you for your time and i will see you in the next lecture